Your first introduction to HEAL is the incredible positive energy. When I came to Northern Health and encountered HEAL, um, I was delighted. The key thing with creating a healthy community is it's the community itself that has to do it. There are so many different areas of policy that we need to address. It was so exciting because there is all these foodies, you know, people that are interested in food. Healthy snacks like veggies and apples instead of candy bars and pop. Food, it basically is an expression of love. We have to work harder now, and I'm glad I'm part of this. By being a couch potato, we're, we're not helping ourselves. That This is a big drain on our, our medical system, and we, it's preventable. By mingling people together and keeping them consistently in a, in a network over time to see the successes and see the possibilities, it's like making a footprint. Wonderful things about HEAL is we have a can-do attitude. HEAL is the acronym for Healthy Eating Active Living and it was in, originally an anti-diabetes um, project. We were going to try to do diabetes education and prevention. As you know, diabetes is epidemic amongst um, particularly our First Nations people, our Aboriginal people, and in the society at large, the diseases related to obesity, lack of activity and poor nutrition. I mean, the research is, is profoundly disturbing. Um, we are poisoning ourselves and furthermore we're being marketed to do it. So he'll set out to look at how could we marshal some of the same influences in, to get us on a healthy path rather than an unhealthy path. So this is where we um, got together the idea of actually funding and supporting HEAL projects, healthy eating or active living, in communities across northern BC. And our, our strong belief was that if we talk to people in the communities, they would know what would work in their community. There was no point in us coming from Prince George and saying, okay, you're going to do a community garden, or you're going to do a good food box, or you're going to start a, a walking club. We would allow the communities to figure out for themselves what was actually going to work for them. I was at the visioning session of the first heel um, in, at Baldy Hughes in Prince George. And it was so exciting because there is all these foodies, you know, people that are interested in food and, and cooking and culinary arts and growing food and community development from all over northern British Columbia. In front of all the participants was a variety of charcoals and pastels in myriad hues. I had all these colors to play with and while they were talking I drew a sunflower and when we were finished the visioning session um, which was uh, chaired by Teresa Healy, Heal at the beginning of her name, and Catherine Wellner, Well at the beginning of her name, they decided they wanted to use the sunflower as an emblem for um, heal. So, um, yeah, that's how it began. And, and then someone uh, looked it up on the internet a little while later, looked up sunflowers, and apparently sunflowers have inulin in them, which is used to treat type 2 diabetes. So it was kind of an interesting how it got channeled. I mean, for me, it was just playing with colors, but it did actually become emblematic of our, our journey with HEAL. When I came to Northern Health and encountered HEAL, um, I was delighted because, you know, um, the frustration of being a doctor, seeing patients one at a time, is you can say whatever you want in your five minutes or 15 minutes with them, and you can prescribe whatever you want, but really, everything that determines how healthy they're going to be takes place out in the community when they're on their own, when they're making their own choices, when they're with their family. Um, and here was, a, here was an attempt with this uh, network to sort of engage the community, the patient, if you want, from my perspective, in um, improving its health um, and in getting, becoming more active in addressing the things, that, um, the things that we know make communities sick, which are things like smoking and not being physically active and not eating and not having access to sort of local food. So this has been exciting to have a chance to um, learn about HEAL, to go to the odd meeting and see the network. And uh, my sense of it is that it's very vibrant and um, that the connections are there. So HEAL is a great way, sort of in an organizational way, for a big health region to sort of connect with its patients or with the people, if you want to use the word patients, or with the people in the community. Your first introduction to HEAL is the incredible positive energy that they give off, which I think that's the starting point for any successful organization. It's got to be built around positive energy. It can't be built around a whining and moaning and griping. It's got to be people who are feeling upbeat, who are 
uh, looking for solutions and who are trying to make something happen. We were so excited by the number of projects that got funded and the good work that we were, they were doing is that we wanted to actually let the communities learn from each other. So we embarked on what's called the Heal Caravan, where we uh, took a school bus out to visit all of the communities sort of north on Highway 97, um, north and south, and uh, visit and share all of the lessons we'd learned. And we're going to be doing the same now, east and west on Highway 16, to visit those communities. We're such a huge geographic region. I mean, the region of Hill spans a, 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 a geograph geographic region the size of Texas. It's huge. So we need to not bring everybody to the hub, to the center, to Prince George. We needed to get out there and find out what people were doing and to share those stories. And so we traveled that long highway, north and south and east and west. We went with a little yellow school bus, we went with a train, we went from Dog Creek, we went to Fort Nelson, we went to Prince George, went to Hazleton, and uh, we saw amazing things. We saw gardens and kitchens and trails and food box programs and people were dancing and food policy in schools, so it was a great experience and we've got lots of wonderful things to share. Come on and join us with H-E-A-L, come on and join us with H-E-A-L. <laughs> Dog Creek was a great place. Um, really enjoyed our experience there. We got to see a, a whole range of, of activities. Uh, the community is doing everything from um, community gardens to uh, food box programs. One of the really interesting things was to see uh, a store flagging initiative uh, in, in their little community store. They had signs uh, depicting healthy food choices and those signs were actually produced by a, a group in Masset. So it was interesting to see things from Massett making their way to Dog Creek. For me, though, um, it was um, one of the highlights was that every family had a community garden. So there are 36 families and 36 community gardens in Dog Creek, and, and that, that's amazing. You could just feel it when you were there that everybody was so connected with their, with their food and their land, and, uh, and they were active. Uh, all the kids came and ran to the bus. Uh, or ran up the hill when the, the bus was to be there. And, and the other great thing about Dog Creek too was one of the first First Nations communities to adopt a food policy in the province. So they're doing everything from gardens to policy. There were policies around um, healthy eating in schools and active living in workplaces. Uh, because active living, of course, is also is also part of this, and uh, and then again, I think that's where the heal idea connects with what's going on in the rest of the province because there are so many different areas of policy that we need to address. The key thing with creating a healthy community is it's the community itself that has to do it. And the community is everyone from the individual person in their home or family to the local government, to local businesses, to community organizations. They also have to be supported by supportive policies from the federal and provincial governments as well. But it takes everyone working together to create a healthy community. So with the focus of healthy eating in the Healthy Eating Active Living program, um, we've seen bulk buying groups, food buying clubs, and good food box programs popping up all throughout the North. They each have a common goal, and that's to save money. And so by working together, the participants purchase large volumes at wholesale prices, and that enables them to stretch their food dollar. Although each program has different objectives, their work does help to increase food security and improve community health. My name is Sandra Stewart and this is my mom Kathy Hill. My main focus or goal is to have healthy schools along with the nutritionists work with getting uh, rid of the junk food and, and healthy snacks like veggies and apples instead of candy bars and pop and having milk machines and water and having it maybe a little cheaper to start with, and it's, it excites me. What does L stand for? Less junk food! That's right, not no junk food, less junk food. Because a little bit of junk food is a way for you. C-L-W-B, C-L-W-B, C-L-W-B. What does W stand for? Water over pop! We talk about increments, taking baby steps, and that's what it's all about. And uh, the healthy schools thing, I think, is taking off, and we're just the beginning of it. My parents had diabetes, my grandparents had diabetes, and my great-grandparents had diabetes. I was diagnosed about three years ago, and uh, actually it was because of heel. <laughs> I realized I had diabetes. 
and um, got involved with Heal more formally this last few months, but realized that these guys, I have seven of these little guys, don't have to get diabetes. And uh, so I've been talking to my kids and saying, look, you guys, we need to change how we eat and, and get active so that your kids aren't going to have it, that we can stop that hereditary cycle because it's not necessary. Diabetes is preventable, so why would you try to kill yourself? This year I've committed myself to being a healthier person, living a more active lifestyle, because I don't feel I could properly model it for my daughter unless I can live it too. And uh, so Mom and I have become accountability partners for each other, and yep. we keep in touch regularly on the subject of how we're doing, how we're eating, uh, how active we're being. How much weight we're losing. <laughs> how much weight we're losing, and um, it's been very encouraging. And I feel a lot stronger that uh, Kaylee is not going to have the problems that uh, my mom has had and that I'm currently trying to avoid. I think it'll be a lot more natural for her. I was really interested in the chronic diseases, especially type 2 diabetes, because a lot of our elders have type 2. As myself, growing up, I used to live on uh, wild game. Uh, and then as I left home, I lived on Big Macs and craft dinner. Uh, and uh, so, I never realized um, the sugar intake that I was that I was uh, consuming. The only way that we're ever going to uh, combat this is is by bringing it home to us, bringing it to the communities, sending messages to your elders, going directly to the source. You know, they have a profound respect for indigenous knowledge, and that's either indigenous knowledge of uh, Aboriginal peoples who who are a significant portion of the population and in uh, northern BC where they work, but it's also, uh, I, I've seen examples that it's also towards working people in general. I left the islands over 20 years ago and all through that time I've, I've been able to uh, to live off island and still eat uh, food from Haida Gwaii. It's because of my mom and my uh, my brothers, my brother Ralph and my, my brother Archie. Um, they've always gone out to get clams and and they uh, clean them and my brother Ralph goes and he, when he digs a lot of clams he'll bring an entire bucket of clams to one of the old people's houses and and then they've got enough clams to get them through you know part of the winter and I guess it's no matter where you are if you have that food you always you always feel um, grounded then and it's a really good it's a really good uh, way of expressing love is because you're offering that grounding to a person and and um, Foods, it basically is an expression of love and it's, and it's that caring for other people. And Activity is, is one of those things that's marginalized in our life as well as the food is. We're so disconnected from food in our bodies and we're disconnected with the, our body's need for activity. And it's such a simple thing that we can do. Just get out there, uh, dance. I've taken up belly dancing and salsa since I've started uh, with heel. Uh, and walking, uh, skiing, snowshoeing, um, anything to get your body moving because it's uh, burning up those calories and it's helping us to get back to a place where we need to be and you know, limiting the obesity and bringing down the type 2 diabetes so we need to we need to get out there and be active. Wonderful things about HEAL is we have a can-do attitude. We're up in the north and we've got the worst health statistics that you can think about. We've got you know po poverty rates are extremely high here. We've got more um, unemployment, excessive uh, level, high levels of unemployment, uh, lower levels of education, um, environmental contaminants, there's all kinds of things up here in the north that are not positive, but overwhelmingly the uh, HEAL group and family choose to ignore that. They choose to, uh, you know, thumb their noses to the statistics and say, you know, we're going we're gonna to make a difference. And um, not just say, but do it. So. Um, uh, yeah, that's kept us going. We, we tend to look at the glass half full instead of half empty. And so if, if, if we look at our strengths and our assets and building upon those, right? So it's not where are the gaps, it's what have we got and how can we make that better? And we all work together supporting each other. When people work together, they can achieve more than when they work alone. And then they have the power to change things that will be good for their health. So if you want to influence public policy, for example, to be healthier, you're much better trying to do that as part of a group or as part of a community network than you are trying to do it on your own. 
Some of the most valuable people in the community, in fact, are the people who can both sit at the kitchen table and talk with the community and can sit at the policy table or the board table and talk to decision makers. And finding those key people who can go between those two tables is very important. The very first thing about Hill was already very radical and very exciting. From the very beginning, it was a collaborative approach. Um, so that was the first important part. The second important part was that from the very beginning, the idea was that this was not going to be an imposed program. To find small amounts of seed money, and to find the people who are already out there doing amazing work in community development and trying to help their communities become healthier and put in the money that would enable them to do what they needed to do. So whether it was money to, um, in one case, to build a walking trail or money to hire somebody to do um, a teaching program on cooking with a particular group of people, whatever it was, to get those things happening. Hill's story is really about taking amazing people all over the north, mixing them together and allowing them to bloom. Really, that's what it's about. It's, it's uh, by mingling people together and keeping them consistently in a, in a network over time to see the successes and see the possibilities. It's like making a footprint. In Prince George, we have this amazing initiative through Make Children First, um, where they have hired a nutrition educator who helps coordinate interagency gardening in Prince George and and um, that's pretty unique because community gardens are generally done from a community setting with a society maybe and people just come as individuals to buy a plot for a certain amount of money and they um, garden individually but in Prince George this garden is interagencies so, for example, in Queensway Garden, we might have eight different agencies working together. And in our 50 by 100 plot, in one year, we've got seven different mental health programs involved together in a, in a, in a gardening initiative, a, um, side by side with many different other agencies. I'm a big promoter of this um, concept called the power of one, the power of one person to make a difference. because. Um, though I believe there are big, big forces at work in the world that uh, shape things and a very small number of very large food corporations dominate almost everything in the food industry, I do at the same time believe in the power of one person to make a difference. They believe in that power. They believe in the power that you can change your life. They believe in the power that you and your neighbors can build a garden that's going to make a difference in this community. And they believe in the fact that government has to help out people who are trying to do the right thing. So they mix the personal, the community, and government in a way that most people don't. I believe that right now I am involved in and experiencing a paradigm shift because I really believe that we're, we're making a context shift about how to view health and active eating and how important it is with the children and we need to bring it back and it takes work. I think you have to actually work hard now, harder to be healthier than you did when you were yeah, well, during my generation, you have to work harder now. And I'm glad I'm part of this. And as a teacher and as a parent and as a daughter, I'm working really hard now to make a difference. And my awareness has gone through the roof even in the last few months just being, by being part of this group. We set out four years ago wanting with this grand vision. And that was um, this network, or the, we called it the food chain the active living chain across northern BC. We were all going to uh, um, connect everybody uh, around the whole um, philosophy of, of living and thinking and, and, and being uh, healed. And uh, I think at the end of, of the three years, um, we brought a lot of that dream to reality. You know, we wanted to create a network, we wanted to change systems, we put in gardens and food box programs, and we wanted to move people into thinking how the pers personal is connected to the political. And we've got people thinking about policy and taking action on policy. It isn't a mysterious word now. And, and at the end of all of this, um, I'm seeing the stars are all lining up, right? It's been a wonderful four years. We, we talked about things and we actually are seeing them come, come to fruition, so it's great. 